good morning. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is an oval canvas. As you know, those of you who know me, I don't throw anything away. So this is a recycled canvas that someone had given me. Thank you, Paula Brown Minkus, for giving me the canvas, as well as some gel pens to more do more doodle art and so she's really an awesome person but she left me and moved to Hawaii and now I'm stuck here with you guys how lucky we all are that I'm stuck with you not that Paula's moved to Hawaii because that is awesome so this is just liquid tax basics burnt umber no sorry I should probably put on some glasses it's burnt sienna a little Liquitex Basic Mars Black and some Apple Barrel Gloss White and swirled around on the canvas till I got a look that I like. Although I don't like that line there, I'll probably wind up covering it up with flowers. So, as a request from uh, Beth, Beth, Beth Rice, sorry, having a fibromyalgia moment. We're going to do wilty sunflowers. And uh, so I'm going to start out with this Master's Touch Burnt Umber, which is really dark, but they're wilting and dying. So, um, oops, I haven't I've never even opened this. There we go. Pour a little bit out on my palette here. See there? That should be all I need to do the center of the flowers. Uh, but I also want to do a little bit of highlight. So I put out a little white and a little bit of black for low lights. Not a lot, just a little. And notice that I put the white and the black on opposite sides so that these don't mix because then it would be gray. We don't want gray. So I wet my brush. The cat's already drunk from it. It was clean. So I have cat spit water. Uh, and I'm going to be brave here. I'm going to uh, just wing it and see how it goes. So I'm brushing, filling my brush with this, this really awesome color. It's nice and creamy. And I want, this is going to be the bigger flower. And so I'm going to want it facing the facing out, sort of dead on. So this needs to be as round as possible. And I'm actually going to make it a huge sunflower because the petals are going to be. Um, Uh, wilted somewhat I want the center of the flower to be bigger because the petals will be like wilting over it at some point and I'm really like, seriously getting out of round ish round ish because I'm not using a template there we go. That's a good one. Uh, so now I want to put in another smaller one about right here. So I'm just swirling in a circle, but it's a smaller circle than that. <laughs> well, dang. Maybe it's not a smaller circle if I keep going all wonky. Yeesh. Okay, so it's round-ish. I can always make this one a little bit larger, but this one I don't want facing full on. I want it this way. So this is going to be more of an oval with a little Buddha belly right there. And at some point I'll put some 
dropped flowers down here. I'm not sure. As a matter of fact, you know what? I think I'll make my this one quite a bit larger because I want to fill the canvas because I don't want to have to do much for the background. <sighs> All right. So I need to... Re the background is dry, by the way. I wouldn't be resting my hand on it because... Um, Well, poop, what is with me this evening? Sorry about my language there. All right, so we're going to go up and come back down. Go out a little bit. Go down and come back up in a straight line. Um, how's that look? Okay. So what do you think? Is this a good depiction of the centers of sunflowers? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Some of the medication that I take makes me extremely dry. That's why my horse get my voice is hoarse at times as well. All right, now so for a little shading on these while we still can before we put the petals on. So without cleaning my brush, I'm going into the black. Oh. And I'm just going to go brush it in around the outer parts. To give a little definition on all of them. So this is going to be black around the edge. I blend on the canvas. Because I want these to look dimensional. I, I want them to look like they're popping off the canvas at you. So if it gets a little out, it that's fine. Um, we'll, because there's sunflowers, we'll come back in and put in some white highlights. I don't particularly have a light source for this in mind. And you know me, I hate fuzzy edges, so. But I don't, I don't, uh, as a matter of fact, I think this needs a little bit more. I don't have a specific light source picked out yet so maybe that will um, come to the reveal itself just like you know messages from the universe and your ancestors reveal themselves eventually and names of animals reveal themselves eventually so will your painting I'm very very much about letting the painting take on its own life and not trying to guide it. The only guiding I did was listening to people with what they wanted. So I'm going to clean off my brush now, but the rest of the painting will um, work itself out. It obviously needs uh, some life of its own, and that's how you give it a life of its own, is by Letting it come, you let the painting come through you, not from you. Okay, so I cleaned up my brush, wiped it off on the towel on my leg. Yes, I got smart this time. And now I'm going into just a little bit of white. Just, just the, well, sorry, cat hair. I live with four cats, it's inevitable. And we're just going to put a little right in the center. And we're going to blend, blend, blend. Oh my God, I just channeled Priscilla Hauser. Blend, blend, blend. I loved her work. Uh, I don't know if she's still doing it, you know. That might not be enough to highlight the way I want it to, because I want it to look roundish. Um, Priscilla Hauser was like the queen of um, 
I know Donna Dewberry too. I like her work too, but I think Priscilla Hauser kind of did it first. Um, just absolutely magnificent artist. There we go. That's kind of like looking the way I want. So again, here we're just circling the wagons here. And I got a little bit much white on that, so I'm going to smush that up in the center and go back. Sorry, that screaming you hear. Wow, look. <laughs> let, me, let me go here before I ruin it. I will come back to that. Uh, I didn't want this to have a chance to dry first. That's looking a little more blendy. All right, let's uh, wipe my brush off on the palette, as you can see. Just wiping it off, getting it as dry as possible. And going back in and being, I'm sorry, the canvas just moved. Being more blendy. There we go. That looks more like it. And if I want, I can come and put a little bit more black on here. As a matter of fact, I think I will do that. Just, just a hint of black to make sure you know that part of the center of the flower is way behind everything else. And since it's a heavier body paint, there we go. That's looking pretty cool. I might put a, I don't even know if you can see this on the brush. It's just this little itty bitty dot of white on my brush right there. And I'm going to go in here and brighten up that middle just a skosh. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. Brighten it up just a hair shade. Alright, so I'm apparently going to be doing everybody. And I think that little bitty skoshy is not enough. There we go. I like it. What about you? Let me know in the comments what you think, because uh, it matters to me what you think. And ask questions, and I will uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, obviously, if this video has been of any value to you, please share, like, and subscribe. I appreciate that part, because that says you love me, and you like what I do, and that I'm on my right path, that I'm... Uh, doing what spirit's telling me to do, especially with the painting. Sorry. Now, I am going to let this dry so that I'm not blending in the yellow. But I will use... Excuse me for reaching. This bright yellow from Apple Barrel. Because uh, I have it. I don't uh, not necessarily go out and buy a special yellow... Uh, for anything or special color for anything unless I'm out of it. I use what I have on hand, which is what painting really should be, using what you have on hand and not being excessive. Having said that, I have an entire closet of art supplies. <laughs> not all of them are paint. But I'll be using this Apple Barrel Yellow, Apple Barrel Bright Yellow. Uh, it's a really nice color. It's, uh, as you can see, it's like bright yellow. And, um, it's, but it's uh, kind of transparent. So I'll be mixing it with a little bit of white and then shading with my burnt umber, which I already have on my palette. But this will take probably about 15 minutes to dry. My paint will still be there, not a problem. Um, if worse comes to worse, and you're going to be leaving it for any length of time, cover it with plastic wrap, put it in the freezer. Or the fridge. It'll last a lot longer that way. But I'm not going to be gone that long. And I might even take a hair dryer to it. So um, I'm going to put every put the recording on hold 
till this dries and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. It's dry now and we can get to working again. Okay, so I'm going to take my yellow, the bright yellow from Apple Barrel, and I'm going to put some out on my palette. I'm using this short one inch brush. You know what? I probably should not use a short brush because the uh, uh, bristles aren't as flexible, especially considering this one didn't get cleaned out as well as it should. I'll put that aside and deal with it later. So, ooh, how about this one right here where the brushes are a little stiff, but they're at least long and it's got this nice long handle. Uh, so I'm going to start by using my brush like this and then coming out to a point. Uh, you'll see as we go along. And I'm using straight yellow with just a tad of white so it's more opaque. Okay, so all I'm doing is mixing a little bit of that white with the yellow and gathering it up on my brush. So let's start with this little one down here. Let me move my camera just a little bit. There we go. I know it's on a slight angle, but oh well. So I'm going to start here, over here at the base and come out. This is a, that's what I mean by start like this and flick out. Um, this is a good place where shaky hands, not quite like that, are a good thing because I don't want Remember, these are supposed to be um, wilting. So, in order to make it wilty, it needs to be squiggly. And I really didn't mean to come in this far. Well, that one's a little... I had to do a pedalectomy there. Um, wow, that's really fun. Okay. See how that comes down? It's a little wonky. So when they're a little... Sometimes twisting the brush helps. And it's going to cross over because it's starting to fall. And how it's like a little wonky, like they're starting to die. We'll cross over that one because it was a terrible flower to begin with. See, I was just twisting the brush around to get like a... Weird shape. Which is what I really want. It's just mostly... I'm going to leave this space right here open because that's where a petal is going to have fallen out. And so this one's going to come out and fall over that one. So they're kind of like, I'm sorry, I have a really hard time working and talking at the same time. You can see how they sort of like cross over each other. 
I will come back in here and just, as a matter of fact, I want to redo some of these petals because they need to be a little wonkier or they need to be, I need to add something in between because these petals over here got larger. And then there's a trick or two. Okay, let's go up here and do this one. There's a trick or two that we can do. That we can make them look more bedraggled when we start adding in our shading. Wow, that's an awful petal. So what I'll actually do is wind up covering it up. And I'll come in with shading. Let's do a little bit of a petalectomy right there. Okay. A lot of mistakes can be covered up with shading. And uh, um, adding different petals over top of it. You can take like this wonky one back into the background just by adding the shading and we're going to be adding uh, some uh, red in here as well. So that petal is going to be coming back down. Uh, some of them are just going to be little thin petals. This is a little hard to do because um, I would normally be moving my canvas around and um, I don't have that luxury today because I'm filming this. So these uh, little... Wow. <laughs> Okay, so we have like an irradiated flower to go with it. The uh, melting part. The uh, wilting part, rather. But you'll see what I mean. When we come back in and put the brown on it, you'll see what I mean about them um, looking more withered and taking the flowers into the background, uh, uh, taking the wide parts of the flowers back into the background. Sorry, the canvas moved again. I really didn't mean to take these in that far. We're going to have like a little missing spot there. And it might come down too that this was the maybe the wrong brush selection, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, okay, on to this one now. This one is going to be a little foreshortened. <laughs> But not. There we go. Okay, this is just the plain yellow now without the. White mixed in. So this is going to, these petals are going to come more in front because this is the side and these are very foreshortened. So all I'm doing is turning these inward. 
a couple of them are turned inward and a couple of them are going to be turned outward. And coming back in. Okay, so at some point, I will come back in with some yellowishy brown and put some falling petals. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to put them in a, well, they're a little spread out, big to be in a vase, so I just might do, I don't know yet. I'm cleaning out my brush at this particular point, and that's how, oh, there it is. It was trying to escape on the floor, so I'm just wiping it off um, on the towel and putting a little bit more yellow on my palette. So I'm going to take a little bit of this brown and mix a little bit of the yellow, or maybe a lot of the yellow, but because I, I really want like a wilting color. All right, maybe a lot more yellow. Maybe I had too much brown. Oh, okay, that's cool. So I can take just a little bit more because I want it not blended completely. I started to say speckled, but speckled wouldn't be right. And now what I'm going to do is switch brushes. I'm going to switch to a smaller, smaller. I've never painted with that one before. I'm actually going to use... Um, Wow, try and find the brush now. I'm sorry, you're just getting this nice view of my arm. I'm going to use this liner brush right here. Um, I've had it for years. It is a, uh, I can't tell the name's all been washed, I mean, worn away. I just wet it in the water and now I'm dragging it through and filling it up with this cut this brownie yellow color so I'm going to come back in and on the edges of the petals you cannot see that because the okay you know what ah, that didn't work switch up time I'm going to go back straight to the brown and I'm going to make It, put it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to put it on the edges of these petals so that it looks like they're wilting. And I might blend that in just a little bit better. And one of the things you can do too is make Especially if it's like a long one here, it's got like that little tail. A little bit more water to make it flow a little bit better. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Splashed myself, the painting, the wall. I'm going to wind up with a Jackson Paula kitchen wall. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here with this brown and drag it through because we just want it to make to look like it's browning on the edges or that the whole petal itself is I just went into some yellow there to give the All right. Hopefully this starts looking a little better as we go on. Here we go. That one kind of looks like I want it to look. Mm -hmm. 
So I want to come up and around and over because I want to come over that other one. Same with this one up and underneath. I probably have enough. I want to go up and over. And I want to drag it out a little bit. Um, my I don't have any on my table. I went to get this really, really used apple barrel paint called Cardinal Crimson. Um, again, I don't know where I even got it. It's old. It's all caked up in here because I don't use it all that much. I'm hoping there's some in here. That happens with old paint sometimes. Aha! You heard the squirt. I'm going to take a little of this red and mix it in with the brown to give some depth and color to the uh, petals. Like I said, I'm sorry, I don't always, I'm not always, <laughs> I can't work and talk at the same time, sorry. Uh, but I'm doing my best, and I'm learning. I'm going to go back into some of these and give just that pop of color. That even though, because even though things are, like in the fall, when things are dying, they still have color to them. And as anybody who has seen, sunflowers can tell you um, there are all different kinds and colors. And if you'll hold on a second, I just realized I left the news on. Wow, I always have something, some kind of noise on in the background because of the constant ringing in my ears. Because uh, otherwise, I, you drive, you know, if you have ringing in your ears, you drive yourself nuts. Um, it's okay that I'm coming around this petal here. Uh, Because I will um, come back over it with that petal. And this petal is very... Well, it kind of looks like there's two petals there. Hello. Oh, Clarence has decided he wants in the picture. Sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to thin this out just a little bit over there with my thumb. So it's a little more brown and pull out to make it spiky. A little bit of red in there. Uh, yeah, the colors of, of flowers as they're dying get to be um, quite pretty. It can be very vibrant. It's like stargazer lilies. When they begin, well, as soon as you pick them, actually, they um, have that sickly sweet smell. It gets more intense as they get um, see how I'm dragging it around to give it a more 
pointy, jaggy look rather than the perfectly rounded flower. So this petal's almost shot. There we go. Here's another one. Uh, so sometimes when flowers die, the colors get more intense because it's like the last hurrah. And all I did was turn the brush as bringing it while well, bringing it down. And I might put a tad more yellow on that if I can find. Yep, oh, there it is. Yellow that hasn't started to scum over. Because uh, that's the first sign of dying, wilty and dying droopiness is be, that your petals become um, thinner at the edges rather than rounded and begin to dry up. Fall is actually, I'm going to come underneath that other one, my favorite um, uh, season. Being from the East Coast, it was pumpkin time. It was uh, the air was crisp and cool. And uh, it was all you could. All you had to do was wear a sweater. And you didn't have to wear a bulky coat or anything. But here in Texas, there's really kind of no such thing as fall. There's two seasons, hot and hotter. But I don't have to shovel snow, so that makes me incredibly happy. Because when you're on the East Coast, you shovel snow. I'm going to put that pedal back. And snow, my friends, is not so fun. When you got to shovel that stuff. Looks pretty. But in all honesty, it's just mostly nasty. Because it'll start melting. It'll be a nuisance. It'll be slushy. It gets everywhere. Don't get me wrong, I like snow. I just like it someplace else other than where I am. But growing up on the East Coast gives you a slightly different perspective on snow and cold. Because, frankly, in um, the winter, up until, like, January, I'm still in t-shirt sleeves. I'm not, uh, I don't get cold that easily. Okay, so how does that look? Does that look like a dying flower should look, or what? I rather like it. It's kind of wonky. You stand back and you realize what it is. But So now, I'm going to do the unconscionable. I'm going to turn this around to make this. Yes, you got to see all my mess back there. And uh, do this flower from upside down because I have fibromyalgia. And reaching up sometimes is uh, painful. And right now, I have not had any meds today, so I am, all I'm doing is mixing some of the brown, or burnt umber, rather, and the red on this one. And I'm going to hold the canvas at the bottom. They actually have a brand, a brand, a type of sunflower 
that is actually, the petals are bright red and the centers are dark, dark brown. There we go. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to come back with a little bit of yellow and strike through that. They are from Mexico. Those particular sunflowers. There we go. So this one has come around and it's So I'm going to put a little bit more red on the outside and leave kind of like a little yellow to help define it from the background. That doesn't look too good. And there, I'm doing this on canvas, but in all actuality, uh, the second version of this will be on a tabletop, on an end table. So the flower comes back and around like that. Not quite like that. Oh, come on. Rest your hand. There we go. Clarence, nobody wants to see your head. Honey. <laughs> no, you want me to pet you. Say bye-bye. Oh. This, by the way, is Clarence. Don't you love that face? He wants to be petted. But I'm busy. So. I <sighs> hope you enjoyed your kitty break. I'm going to take a bright spot of yellow and streak down. There we go. Sometimes you just got to work it till it gets done, and other times you really need to leave it alone. Because uh, you can overwork these things. See that pedal is still. Oh, I'm getting carried away again. We're gonna we're gonna carry this pedal over this way. There we go. Because these pedals are actually foreshortened, and they are coming back into. They're curled back over onto the center of the sunflower, which is where we get sunflower seeds from. Yum. Okay, I'm going to put a red stripe right down. Okay, I'm just when you can't see me, I'm just reaching into my palette. I want to come over like that, but that's too dark for you to see. There we go. Ah! Oops, sorry, dropped my brush. And this petal comes out and whoosh, whoosh. This one does the same, but I'm going to put a little bit more red in there because, frankly, I like red. Red's my favorite. And I'm just putting in the wilty color. Ah, 
Okay. Okie dokie, so we'll come back I went and do this because I wanted to do over, make sure that pedal got under for some reason or another. These are turning out to be, this was the more opaque color. So I'm just coming back in with some brown, burnt umber, and going over those petals. This one I want to take that way, because that's down, because <laughs> I turned the canvas upside down, as I am occasionally want to do, because it's just easier. Now I'm going to take some of the red and streak into that. I'm being a little sloppy with it because it's not going to stay that color. Because I'm wiping off my brush, drying it off on the towel just to remove the excess water, and I'm going back in with yellow. So my phone just decided to stop recording all of a sudden, so I don't know how much of that you got, but you can there, you know, you can see. I'm going to turn the canvas up back right side up. Okay, that's, that's tight. There we go. And now we just have the petals on this one. Those look a little less than the others. Less, less what? I'm not really sure, but it's, um, it's okay. I might come along and come in here with these and do wouldn't it be different if we had let me rest my hand finger on the canvas hopefully not and that could be one of the following ones I'm getting a little all one color, so let me see what I can manage. I want to get back more into this, although each one is a little different. So I think I don't know. Um, oh, let me try one petal with some black. Let me put just a little bit more of that back on my canvas palette. This is a uh, the Liquitex one I've had for a long, long time. And uh, it's a little more viscous than normal, so I'm just going to thin it out with a little water. Paint doesn't go bad, but it will dry up. And a little bit more yellow because it's now mostly brown. <laughs> so I want to take a little bit of the black with a little bit of yellow and that usually makes green. But I want to see Okay, and I can put like a little bit of red in there too. It's not too bad. So a little bit of black and a little bit of yellow. That petal is actually kind of disappearing behind another petal because then there's, wow, <laughs> I really need to rest my hand. And a little bit of red because this petal, a little bit of black, 
is coming behind all this stuff. Might put a little bit of yellow in there. Because the yellow on the canvas has really started to dry. Now for some brown. Just to add some variety. A little bit of red. I don't like mixing these too much because I want to I want that mottled look. Okay, so we have this here. I want more yellow. This is a bigger petal, and I want it to come in front of that one. Um, I think I will put a little dot of red in here. Okay, let's go back to the brown. Because we might as well, wow, alternate these colors. I want to get some of that off of there. I think I had too much color. I want to put some yellow in to not make it look so bad. And staying with our yellow and brown for the moment. And I think I'll stay with the yellow and brown on this one too. A little bit more brown as we get out towards the edge. Because that petal actually got to be a little thick. So I think I'll widen it up some. That's good. Well, that's not too bad, actually. Yellow and brown. With a spot or two of that pretty red color. Um, I really like working with red and yellow and orange and all kinds of metallic-y, earthy type colors. Um, there is actually a petal coming out underneath here. There we go. It's sort of like behind all that other stuff and you can't really see it. Should have started with these first. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get a good grip on my brush this direction. There we go. I'm just cleaning off my brush and I'm grabbing a little bit more yellow because there isn't a lot of yellow on these because it was a little more transparent. So I'm grabbing some brown. <laughs> I'm grabbing some brown. So I'm trying to find a place to anchor my hand. So while a shaky hand is good, um, totally out of control is a whole nother a 
whole nother kettle of fish. I don't want to be out of control, just ew. Stuck my hand in some paint. So the easiest way to avoid that is take it and turn it so that I can work on it. Sorry. So there's a little bit of yellowy so that it becomes more. Um, um, this. Okay, let me get this petal in the back first. See, there's this petal coming back here. I want to get it nice and dark first. With a tip coming out here. So now I will go back into this petal, make it a little bit more yellow. And add a streaky brownish edge. That's pretty good. Maybe if this painting thing doesn't work out. <laughs> I'm kidding. The painting thing is working out. So is the tarot thing. Huh? Just humming right along here. So again, we're just addling, addling, adding those um, streaks of highlight color. I think I'm going to turn it this way. So I can get my hand in more paint over here. Alright, let's see. Let's go ahead and do these. Well, that worked out well. Alright, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and draw in, paint in this whole petal over here. But then I'm going to come back with this one and go over it but to give it some little bit of depth I'm not gonna go over the other petal I'm gonna go under the petal so it looks like it's kind of interwoven and I'm gonna come back in and add oh way too much red so I'll come back in And add in some yellowishy color. And sometimes your brush just gets too much paint in it and you gotta start over. I mean, wash it out. You don't wanna start over necessarily. So this petal, okay, let me do this petal first. Because it kind of goes behind the other. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What a, look, a stroke of luck that was. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of red in there. I'm going to put the red there because I have too much on my brush. And streak that in a little bit. I know streaking it in sounds a little strange, but... You know what I mean. So I've got this petal coming up around that flower. That other petal. You know what? I think I've discovered that it's kind of late. Or actually, it's really early in the morning where I am right now. Because uh, of my hours that I work. I've just gotten a little weird with them here lately. And... My days have gotten a little, like, I wake up at weird hours not knowing what day it is. Having to look at my phone. It's like, oh, is it nighttime? Oh, no. It's uh, not nighttime anymore. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that real well, but this petal does come around. I'm going to wash out my brush again because I still have this to do. And I want to add some yellow highlights to that because it's just not making me real happy at the moment.
Okay, that's a little better. So let me come back in here. Oh, there's that petal underneath there. Sometimes you discover petals in the strangest places. So, put a little bit of the burnt umber in there as well to make it a little streaky looking, to make it look like it's dying. And then there's this petal here, which seems to have gotten lost. There we go. It's not lost anymore. Okay, so let me turn this right side up or the way I had intended it to work. And what do you think? Let me move that out of the way. I'm thinking that looks pretty cool for... The question now becomes, uh, what do I do about stems and leaves? Hadn't thought much about that, so I'm going to let the petals dry. And then I'll draw some falling. Well, I can actually paint those in now. Let me take some yellow on one half and some brown on the other half. So I'm just double loading my... It doesn't look very double loaded, but there, that looks more double loaded. So I want to come down, whoosh, 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 add in a little red into that, whoosh. Yes, it's necessary to make the wishing sound. Wish, 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 wish. That's enough wishing. Wish. And so that's petals falling off, coming out. There we go. Uh, from the flowers. Now, that still leaves the problem of what do I want to do about stems? Whatever I do, I'm going to have to work around um, the flowers and the petals. and um, I'm even going to wait to come in, to come back in and put the little little micro petals in around. Uh, wow, that's a really weird shape, isn't it? Um, that's okay. Sometimes things in nature get weird. So I will probably come in and put in um, a stem here, out here, here, and then one here. Um, It's either that or gather them all in a really small vase right here. And that was that would be, you know, like about, maybe, uh, you know, about the size of my fist because that's all that's going to really fit on the canvas. And I don't think that's necessarily a good idea. So I think I'm just going to put it in and just drag it down till it disappears and um, uh, let them just be floating because it's just on a canvas. It's meant to be... This type of background is meant more for a uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Still life. Instead of something more dynamic like it looks like it's out in the field. Uh, but we will uh, get to figure that out when this paint dries. Be back then. Bye. Hi. I'm back. What you have not seen is the past two hours I've been staring at this canvas trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, so I decided to go ahead and I don't know if you can see this but I took my trusty chalk, white chalk pencil 
and put in the stems and a vase. And I thought, oh, and a, a line for the table runs across there. And I thought, I don't want to do a glass vase because doing glass, I've not attempted it yet. So I thought I would do the vase in a similar but lighter color than the background. So I'm going to be mixing Liquitex Burnt Sienna with some white off camera because Harvey has decided to join me for this um, portion and he's just like hanging like glue which is fine because I like Harvey a lot he's my oldest he's eight can't really see him too well Harvey look up baby Look up at everybody. Come on. This is him. That's my Harveykins. So he's going to sit here and help with the painting. Aren't we lucky? So let me reset this. But he's made it a little inconvenient because he is right in my way. And I'm trying not to let his tail get into the paint. So... Hang with me, folks. Here we go. The reason I decided, yeah, I did, I'm going to be doing an opaque base. And that actually might even be a little, see what I'm doing here? I don't like that color at all. So I'm going to get into the burnt sienna and uh, uh, well uh, okay I'm putting what I have on my palette here and it's kind of uh, it's an odd color but it's an odd painting so here we go <laughs> um, I tried to get like a fat ginger jar shape I don't know if you can see that or if I'm out of camera or Harvey's in my way in of the camera I don't know but uh, I am going to paint around the petals but these um, falling petals I'm painting over because ah I can redo those. That's not like a big deal. And um, well, this is working pretty well, isn't it? I guess it's Harvey made all the difference in the world. He just said, oh my gosh, now he's laying down. He's my sweet little man. It's not necessarily easy painting around these. So, the lesson here is, um, hmm. Plan your painting. Don't just start like I did with no thought other than, ooh, wilty sunflowers. I think I'll make those. So plan it out a little bit more so that you don't have to go through this. Um, 
Thank goodness I love this brush. It's uh, nice and fat, but will come out to a really sharp point, which is what's really helping me get in there to do those little areas in between the petals. Oops. <laughs> That's not always a good thing. Oops. Okay, that works. It's not too bad. Believe me, I've painted worse, so... Okay, so let me go back here, finish off this, this side. That's even reasonably symmetrical, too, isn't it? And this is really not a bad color. Uh, had I to do it over again, I would make a different... color of background, I would have put in probably a blue background, but I just lost the shape of my face. Oh, brother what happens when you can't work because there is a cat and all right well let's just eliminate that little petal I can always go back and put it in there's really no there really aren't any mistakes it's just stuff you didn't mean to happen so that's not too bad so now I need to make up, I'm going to go to a different palette because this one's all messy and still wet. So I'm going to go to a different styrofoam plate. <sighs> well, actually, no, I'm not just yet. I am going to... Okay. I'm a little disorganized because I just remembered about 30 minutes ago that I was supposed to go to volunteer at the hospice office this morning and I have totally forgotten to go, which is not really cool to forget to go, but I will go this, I mean, you know, as soon as I can. If, I, if not, well, I know they have paperwork. They've got to get out. So here I'm doing black on the edge. Jez. Going to wipe off as much of that as I can because I got too much. Because I get, uh, I guess my light source is going to be coming from the front. So I've just gathered a little bit more of the tan color. So I'm just trying to spread the black out. In retrospect, what I should have done was mix the black with a little bit of um, 
gloss medium and use that. So, um, we'll be doing that next time. Because this is presenting a bit of a color challenge for me. I guess maybe I lost my focus because I remembered I was supposed to do something and didn't quite get there. But I will say, as soon as I finish this painting, okay, a little white, probably way too much. You can always put more, but you can't always take. Okay, Harvey, what, thank you. Wow. <laughs> you can always put more paint on, you can't always take it off. And when you plan, you also plan out your colors so that you're making good color choices, to which I was like, well, this is not what I had envisioned. Okay, that, yeah, that's what it really comes down to. And I go right back to what I was saying earlier about the painting coming through you, not from you. So when you say you, uh, I will, if I were to do this painting over again, I would definitely do different. But in this particular case, I'm thinking the painting came through me. And I've got too much black in this brush still. Um, <sighs> I think this is one of those cases where uh, the painting came through me because this is not kind of what I, it's not working. It's not what I envisioned doing. Um, so I'm going to add just a little bit more for the top right here. But I'm going to take a little, not a whole lot, because I want to put some shadow that's red. How'd it get red in there? Oh, I, I raked through it on my way off the palette. <laughs> okay. I want to put a little shadow right here. And then I'm wiping my brush off on my palette to make it a little drier so I can blend better. because I want to bring it down to give a more round appearance. And Oof. I think part of it is I lost my concentration too because I stared at it for two hours. Just whoops. <laughs> Sometimes, there we go. Things just don't always work the way we plan. So this is one of those cases where the painting had its own idea about what it wanted to do. That's not too awful bad. So, dang it. I ran it, ran it right through the red again. Um...
I want to take a little bit of the black and put a shadow in here. And while I'm at it, I might as well do this. Um, okay, mix that with a little black, and we're going to put the table in here. It's just a suggestion of a table. It's not a... It is just a suggestion of a table. That's all. And I will come back and put... Um, some petals on the table to unify it. and uh, make it look um, uh, like the top and the bottom match. And I have this feeling I made my table, whoops, up here, down too low. So I'm going to go and put in the table a little higher. Hopefully that's kind of looking wood-ish or something. Like I said, it's just a suggestion of a table. You know, that doesn't look too bad. And I've only done this painting once. I haven't had to redo it six and seven times. Now I have to put in the um, stems. And I may come back and do like a little, the thought occurred to me, like a little happiness symbol or something on the vase to give it a little bit more interest. But for right now, I think that's good. So, for the, see, I'm reusing a palette. I will put a little yellow for the stems. I don't need much. A little yellow. And a little black so I can make green. <coughs> so, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of black. And that is a very dark green. So maybe I need to put a little bit more yellow in there. There we go. That's perfect. That is the perfect color. That's exactly, I don't want to fully mix it because it will take away the highlights, but yeah, because I'll, yeah, I'll be putting them in at the same time. Don't take my glasses off. I won't be able to see. So, I am, however, going to remove the excess paint and get a little bit on my, the edge. And I'm going to start with the stem.
And again, paint in between. the petals and it's important to steady off your hand somehow or another I just put my elbow on the table since Harvey has now gotten down there we go Now, I would like to come back with a little bit of the yellow and put like a little highlight here and there. But I did not want to make a pregnant stem. So I'll put a little highlight up here too. That was not enough. Alright, I'll steady my hand. There we go. So now I need to go back in with this one and do the same thing. I'm trying to get it as close to up next to the flower petal without going over the petal because the more I obliterate the more I'll have to go back and do and then that means I have fussing to do with it and I don't want to fuss with it any more than I have to so there's that now I have to cover this little piece right here and I'm just using the corner of the brush to put this in That's not too shabby. Um, I'll come in here and put in some highlight. That wasn't a highlight, that was black. Okay, so we'll make that a shadow down there. I guess I dipped into the wrong section of my palette because there's the yellow. There we go. Because where I'd really like the shadow is up here. Because this part of the stem is completely in shadow. That's not too awful bad. So here, there's not a whole lot to fill in here because the petals are covering it up. So. I'm going to put in a little highlight right here because I want to show that it's passing in front of. I think I want to come up here and put more yellow in. Okay. The only thing left to do, and I'll do that all at once in the next portion of the video because right now I've got to go to do my volunteer stuff, is um, do these like little the little teeny weeny petals that show up 
around sunflowers and uh, daisies and stuff. I guess not so much daisies, but sunflowers, some daisies, but sunflowers. They have these little itty bitty petals that show up right around the in, the ends, on the inside at the at the base of the petal is what I mean. And then I might do something else with the face, and I'll just come in and do some more petals, and then put on the finishing touches. But I'm thinking it's pretty cool. I like it so far. Anyway, so as always, let me know what you think, and I'll be back in a little bit. Bye. Good morning, evening, whatever time of day it is while you're watching this. Um, ah, oh, good Lord, I am so sorry. I, my feet ran right into the tripod so right now all we're doing is finishing up the details I have a brush and um, that nice bright yellow color I'm coming in here uh, steadying my hand and I'm putting in that um, Those little teeny weeny, almost fuzzy looking petals that surround the center of the sunflower at the base of all the other petals. So what do you think? Has this been fun for you so far? Um, do you think this is something you could try? Because this is certainly, I'm no great talent, believe me. Um, this is, uh, one of those cases where, it, you know, the painting kind of had to speak for itself. And that's okay, because we talked about that pretty cool and that also um, gives like where I screwed up and went too far in to start the pedal that's pretty cool too so over here on this one I don't have to do all of them because you don't see all of them and in some cases I'm covering up the base of the pedal Oh well. <laughs> there we go. That's pretty. Wow. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. That was uh, rather unintended to have it sort of like all fall forward on me like that. Okay. So we're going to finish this one up here. It's just a matter of making like little fuzzy dots. It's not... This part of it isn't rocket scientist. Rocket science. It is... Indistinguishable little petal dot shapes. Okay, made us. Oh, see how I took that back to round? It's kind of like the pet little petals are overgrown. So the little teeny petals have like straightened out my my mess. Um. So the only thing really missing at this point. And now I'm just mixing the black, uh, some black in with the yellow, and I'm making green. 
because black and yellow make some of the prettiest color green I've ever seen. Okay, it stopped recording again for some reason, but I'm back now. And I'm finishing up mixing the, see, green, uh, black and yellow and making green there. And what I'm going to do is make, attempt to make, make sure my brush is nice and wet. Um, a couple of curly Q, swirly, filler type things. So all I'm doing is rolling my brush in the paint to get a nice uh, little beads of paint on it. So I'm going to come up here like this. And I'm going to come up behind here. And I'm going to come over here. So that one, it came behind. There we go. And so I'm going to bring another one in front. That just sort of adds a little if something. Okay. Now, what I want to, to do is um, come back in with a little teeny drop or two of yellow and a little little teeny drop of this burnt umber. Because we're going to be, well, dang, can't get, oh, there we go, um, to do, to do, do, and maybe a little teeny, teeny drop of that red. Well, that was more than a little teeny drop, but apparently I need to replace that. Uh, so I'm going in the yellow and the brown half mixing adding a little bit of red in there these are the fallen petals There we go. That looks more like a fallen petal. I'm putting a few more over here because of this big gap here. Okay, apparently I'm supposed to end this painting. I'm kind of thinking it's done anyway, especially now that I got the swirlies and the curly cues and the uh, uh, extra fallen leaves. All that's left is to sign it because um, apparently this thing does not want me to record much more. So I'm just rinsing out my brush. <laughs> 